Hey guys, Nishquick here, and welcome to a very special episode of the EXP Podcast. As you can see here, I'm here with a very special guest, and that is Andres Restart. And I feel like a lot of my viewers definitely know who Andres Restart is. He's one of my favorite Nintendo YouTubers. And um, now since you're here on the channel, I wanted to say... Andres Restart is one of the reasons I kind of started YouTube during the whole pandemic time. So it's kind of like a full circle. He's here on the channel and it's so cool to have you here. So thank you for joining. No, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. And thanks for the high praise. That, that's awesome that, you know, I helped inspire you at least a little bit. So oh, I, yeah. I, I yeah, didn't know that. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah, one but, of my uh, favorite Nintendo YouTubers of all time, for sure. But today we're going to be talking about metroid and we're going to be doing something metroid related we're going to be making a metroid tier list because you guys know i have made a few metroid videos on the channel but i'm gonna start making a few more this year because the elephant in the room is with switch 2 metroid prime 4 is possibly coming as well and i've been in kind of a metroid mood i've been playing a few more metroid games here and there especially the past couple years and especially this year i kind of did a metroid binge so i thought who better to come on the channel to do a metroid tier list with me than andres restart and one thing is i've played a few metroid games i haven't played all of them but i feel like the ones that i haven't played andres has played and vice versa the ones that andres hasn't played i might have played so without further ado let's get started yes yeah sure um uh, right and andres is graciously helping me with this whole scene and shout out to him for that thank you very much no problem yeah so how, how do you want to do this do you want to go by release order or by the order that it is here i think we can i think we can go release order and all right uh, it's that's really tough yeah really tough because like now i have to start thinking about like wh which ones i position where and where do we start mm -hmm. um well I mean, how do you want to do you want to start like worse first and then just kind of work our way up i like, i think we can it, just go there, by release order of the okay metroid games. and maybe like, we start could start off with metroid NES. you know if, if we yeah. change our minds like halfway through like ah that doesn't feel right uh, all right i'm, I'm down yeah, yeah yeah we can okay. we can go with the flow because sure. yeah i like I, I feel like we will have some disagreements along the way as well that's inevitable yes um all right so, so i guess metroid fusion then metroid fusion okay here's my thing with fusion i think fusion is a good metroid game it's a great metroid game but it's never been one of my favorites and i don't know why i think it is a very linear game in its progression and it didn't feel as rewarding as super to me and it didn't give me that like metroidvania discovery feeling i don't know about you how did you feel about fusion i like fusion um i would argue that with fusion it is it does feel more bite-sized and it's kind of easier to get through it and so on one hand you could argue okay it doesn't really give you the same sort of metroidvania experience especially like super metroid but on the other, you could argue that it's also easier to sort of jump into, you know, and kind of experience like you can play it and like you could probably you can play and beat it in one to two sessions, yeah. you know, if you kind of know your way already. Um, so I, 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 I agree, at least with that we will probably um, be thrown by the wayside by the Metroid community if we put Fusion above Super Metroid. Um, so. I think Fusion I, should I go feel like Super I'll be Metroid. very harsh on Fus Fusion with this. So I would say... I would say high C, low B. And that, oh, that you, might... I, I actually... I thought we were going to disagree, but I, I think that's fair. Okay. Now, I, I guess maybe... Should we take a moment to like... Like, for example... Uh, we're just trying to rank them in terms of the Metroid games, right? Because like, let's say, for example, we put a Metroid game in D... That doesn't mean the game's like a one out of ten, right? Yeah. That just means it's, you know, out of the Metroid games, it's yeah. the worst. But it doesn't mean you shouldn't play it. Yeah, yeah. 
All right, so yeah. I mean, yeah, we're just that, ranking them amongst the Metroid series. Right, so like, yeah, C doesn't mean it's it's like a seven out of ten game. It just means it's yeah, because like eventually there we are might several get to tiers, like other M, and other M is Ooh. maybe not the best Metroid game. Mm, but mm, so, well, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my my, yeah. my lip seal on that one until we get to it. Or or okay. uh, another example is like Metroid One. Metroid One is one of the most revolutionary games you could say. Because it was like one of the big three NES sure. games, but also and it had, like started it the Metroid aged series so so poorly. <laughs> yes, but yeah. I I think Fusion we can put in C for now, and I will say I feel like a few Metroid like veterans will be like Fusion is too low; it needs to be at least a B or an A or even an S. I liked Fusion, but I feel like the Metroid essence. I've gotten from other games in the series, and we'll talk about that more. Another thing I like wasn't into with Fusion was, um, like I, I talked about how linear it was. It literally felt like point A to B, then B to C, and C to D, because like you go from one like terminal, and then you go talk to Adam in the other place, and Adam tells you where to go, and sure. then you go to where Adam go like tells you where to go, and it's just kind of like it felt linear, and it didn't feel like yeah, it was it was some, yeah yeah it it was pretty linear um, yeah I, that's how I felt um and, but it was also cool right because you had like those moments where the uh, you know you're being followed the SAX right? yeah yes. and that was you know it, it was a little bit of like dread before dread yes right? yeah uh, and so i mean in a lot of ways fusion there's elements of fusion that that it became what dread is and i mm -hmm. spoiler alert dread's gonna be higher on this list I, oh I, yes I, I, yeah, yeah most definitely I mean, unless you just yeah it doesn't look you don't disagree but it would have been I funny if you did but i i just <laughs> i really doubted you were gonna you were gonna disagree yeah um so yeah, I mean, I could see us fitting Fusion into into the B tier, right? Um, but it would be low B. Uh, I'll give uh, it a high C for now. Yeah, I we'll, think, we'll, I think high maybe C we'll, we'll revisit this, but uh, also, I agree with that. Fusion had some very difficult fights. That's another thing, which Fusion was very That's a plus grueling. for me. Yeah, That's yeah. A yeah. Plus for me. Yeah. yeah, very iconic fights, though, but very difficult. All right. Yeah. I think so, we can move on to Metroid 2. Have you played Metroid 2? I have not beaten it. So what are your thoughts on Metroid 2? I have not played Metroid 2. I have played Samus Returns, and I have... Right, which is a remake of it. Yes, I have opinions on Samus Returns, but we'll get to that. Yeah. But since you've played both, I kind of want to know how archaic Metroid 2 feels now, because sometimes I see gameplay of it, and I'm like, how can I play this? If you can't tell, I already kind of feel like it should be a <laughs> tier below um, yes. Metroid Fusion, for sure. I, I mean, I, I almost feel like I'm insulting Fusion by having it just one tier below, right? <laughs> so that's that's maybe me, me making the argument that we should put Fusion up a tier. But um, yeah, uh, so it, it, it's one of those things where, you know, when you play the game, it's hard to differentiate the environments. From what I, I've played it, I haven't played a lot of it. Um, I've played Sam's Returns, and, you know, I have a, a lot more opinions on that one. Um, so, but you know, from what I played of it, it does feel kind of archaic. It hasn't aged extremely well. It definitely, you know, is one of those games that needed a remake, and so I'm glad Samus Returns exist. Um, it's a shame we can only play it on 3DS right now. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, I honestly, I feel like we don't have to dwell too much on this. I mean, we feel free to, you know, it's your it's your show. But I, I just kind of feel like, yeah, Metroid 2, it, it, it's definitely fun, but it's also hasn't aged incredibly well and so it definitely is a, a cut below at least a cut below fusion mm -hmm. maybe two but we'll we'll circle back to fusion you know one thing i found very surprising about metroid 2 is i recently completed samus returns and mm -hmm. then i saw some gameplay of metroid 2 and then i realized that the spider ball was in the original metroid 2 when i like thought it was a samus returns exclusive thing and i'm like mm -hmm. wow that's actually pretty cool that they yeah actually included that in a game boy game so that's nice, and then it made like a comeback in Metroid Prime later on. But um, one thing I wanted to ask you: Is there a Game Boy Color version of Metroid Two? I think if you play Metroid Two on Game Boy Color, it does have some color. 
Like, okay. It's, it's just inherently but it's done. it's not enough to kind of differentiate where you're going and stuff. I think it helps a little bit, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, your, yeah, your camera's good now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think I think Metroid 2 in D tier works. And... Yeah, I mean, I don't like putting it in D tier because I just don't like the sound of D, but also it's definitely worse than Fusion. So mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think that's I think we're, we're OK so far. I mean, maybe you could argue it should be in the same. I don't think they're on the same tier. I just don't. So, yeah, yeah I think we can move on. Yeah. Um, Metroid... This one's this, yeah. this one's tough. Federation Force. Interesting. I have not played Federation Force, but ah. I remember the announcement for Federation Force, and I was very confused when I saw it. I was thoroughly, thoroughly confused. I saw Metroid Prime Federation Force, and I was like, is this like a... Is this even like a Nintendo game? Like, is this like a fan game? And then I looked at it, and I was like, whoa, it's actually like a 3DS game. Why does it look like this? And I think... A lot of the Federation Force um, uh, discourse comes from it being not the Metroid game that was needed at that time. But in hindsight, you could be like, it was kind of the warm up to Samus Returns and Prime 4 and Dread. But then, of course, Prime 4 had its whole thing. But how was Federation Force as a game? Like, Without, so Federation like, Force is it. also one yeah. of those games, one of the few Metroid games I haven't finished. Um, and so, like, my, my problem with, with Federation Force, I actually thought the gameplay was good. Um, mm -hmm. I actually really liked the concept as well. The art style definitely, you know, was, didn't feel Metroid. Mm -hmm. um, but my biggest problem with it was just that whenever I would play it, the idea is to find it is to play it with a friend. It's a it's a, it's built around yeah. being a cooperative game, which I think is really cool in theory. But being on 3DS, right? Which I don't know. I guess the Wi-Fi cards aren't as good as modern consoles. But whenever I would play it, my games would drop. I I didn't finish Metroid um, Federation for Metro Prime Federation Force, not because I didn't want to, but because every time I tried to play with my friend. The games would drop and so oh. i never finished it for that reason uh, so like i don't know do i should i judge federation force poorly because of the hardware it was on um and just connection issues or should i you know um i F don't know for I, federation I, force or do we be not uh, are we gonna be nice and give it a d i would say it goes and it's a d tier i don't know I, how, I, I how do you like... think of it compared to metroid 2 though mm. well metroid 2 is definitely a metroid game federation force is also a metroid game in 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 name but uh yeah um i'm gonna say d tier right mm -hmm. i think it's one of those things where like metroid 2 if it was repurposed for a modern console it would be a lot better Right. Yeah. Um, ironically, Metroid With, 2's yeah. repurposing was on 3DS and was a lot better. Um, <laughs> and this was also on 3DS. But I think if they were to like go back to the Federation Force formula, let's say a couple years after Prime 4 comes out, it's a massive success. They want to do kind of like a Halo ODST, but for Metroid. You know, this Federation, the Federation Force formula with a proper art style and a solid online infrastructure would actually be pretty damn awesome. What if? that's what we get in prime four what if like a sub thing like i'm, a, I'm for it yeah metroid prime four yeah. is the single player game and then the sub game or the sub like um play style is metroid prime four federation force something like that i'm for it yeah that'd yeah be cool yeah, yeah I, be. I was hearing some other like nintendo channels talk about it they're like what if there's multiplayer you get the hunters you get to play as all these different hunters from the series and it's like a actual online multiplayer shooter which competes yeah. with halo and call of duty that would be very interesting i i mean i guess we'll see we'll see yeah that's one heck of a segue because uh metro prime hunters it was a actual i literally had the hunters yeah. right um it was like one of the it was a, basically like a hero shooter yeah. right um and it was for nintendo one of their like biggest online efforts early on yeah 
I, I played the yeah. demo very, very, oh, very long first, time. Back. For you know what, I almost feel like First Hunt deserves to have its own yeah. listing here because it's its own thing. You can't play First Hunt in Hunters. Last I checked, yeah, um, it's its own thing. It's its own level oh, and multiplayer. Yeah, um, so it's different. Mm -hmm. I I think I think where you've placed it fits perfectly i agree I think, yeah, right I like think... the, it's 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 one of those things where metro ironically metro prime hunters i thought had a better online than, than federation force um but and that's like what the game is really built around right and so the online stuff is cool and i think it's a really cool proof of concept for what you could do for maybe metro prime 4 we do based off the job hirings and stuff uh, there's a lot of uh, thir you know third-party Western talent that they've hired that we'll has experience with online shooters like the, your Call of Duties and such and things along those lines. So like I think they could put something together that would be Hunters esque as a side option, right? Like it's mm -hmm. still the the, the killer uh, main campaign. And I think one of the reasons why Hunters is so low here um, is because the single player campaign for Metro Prime Hunters is very weak yeah. compared to the rest of the series. Even though the multiplayer is really good um you know and, uh, but it's this was retro is right player. retro did no. this oh no, okay well i mean they oversaw some things but okay they there was i forget the name of the studio um there was another studio okay. that, uh, also it, but... it, it used the stylus a lot right so was it kind of like a kid icarus uprising control scheme where you hold yeah, you, it you, with one yeah, hand you, you, and then you, you would use the touch screen to to, to to aim around. I yeah. remember that. Yeah, interesting. Um, but the thing is, they gave you like um on the DS, they had like a, a little thumb strap, right? So yeah. like like a little ah, strap. Ah, yes, and, the original and like bulky DS. Wrap. Yeah, yeah, and you would wrap it around your. I would play like I honestly play like that a lot, and I, I thought it worked pretty well. So mm -hmm. you know, I thought it was actually really cool. Interesting. I don't remember my DS Lite ever having that, but that's a. Well, it might thing. have been an original DS thing. Yeah, yeah. I think it was the bulky. And the thing is, I would use it on my light because I, my, I, I got a light eventually, but I originally had a, a, the OG DS, and that's where I got the strap. Mm -hmm. And I would strap it into my light. Cool. So I'm looking so, at the name of the developer. It is um NST actually. Oh. So, okay. Yeah. So in-house Nintendo. Apparently, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So for our next one. We've been going in order on the tier list, but I kind of want to switch it up. I want to talk about Zero Mission, which is near the end, because that is one game that I have played and you have not. I've so not. let's uh, let's put it let's keep it in B for now. But I want to okay. like tell you what I think about Zero Mission. Sure. I love Zero Mission. I beat it in about four hours, maybe like two days. It took me to beat it a few like playthroughs and I completed it. It was a very, very like a oh, quick game, a very snappy game. It had the feeling of fusion, but it, to me, it felt a little nicer and it felt a little better. And I really liked that. It was a very condensed Super Metroid because you are in Zebus, you're in the same place, you might be going to the same places, fighting the same bosses and all that. But of course, since it's a remake of Metroid 1, it was a lot more condensed a lot more streamlined and a lot shorter of a game of course you don't go to like the sunken ship and fight what's the name fantoon and any of that but you do fight ridley you fight Craid, you fight mother brain and then you have this cool segment at the end where you're zero suit samus and you have like a stealth segment and it was good but i felt like at times it kind of overstayed its welcome but it wasn't like a really boring part of the game it was cool because you lose your power suit and then you have to kind of do the whole thing where you're like going through this whole space pirate uh infested place you get all your power-ups again and then you do the whole like hail mary thing at the end where you have like all your power-ups destroying all the sp space pirates and then you leave so it was a very like condensed very fast paced kind of good short game because i've been playing a lot of like really long rpgs so sometimes it's nice to just yeah um the thing about a lot of metro games is that they are kind of like shorter yeah um but they're kind of built around replayability oh uh, yeah and so like i 
it's also it's actually one of the reasons why i like wind waker a lot more than other um zelda games because it is the shorter it's shorter era. which sounds like a weird thing to say because you think you'd want bigger and, and generally i do but there are exceptions and then it's just one of those games like it's not a short game like there's enough meat there right there's enough there um but you can kind of get through it and you're like wow that was cool and it's not like a huge investment and then you might do it again a year later um mm -hmm. so i think there's something to that and you know i haven't played zero mission yet so i guess i can't really speak on it yeah. but i will say from what i've heard and from what i i did play fusion and i've beaten fusion and i really like fusion i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna make my move now okay i think you know what given that you've played zero mission you know i will defer um to you saying that it's above fusion um, i'm sure some people will look and debate that harder um but i do feel like they deserve to be in the same tier okay i i i, I, I would say from what i've seen of, of zero mission i've heard other people and how just good fusion is as a game i think they should be in the same tier i will say i will give zero mission a very high b but I'll give Fusion a little bit of a lower A. And the reason is, is because- Wait, you're, not, you're gonna put Zero Mission up to A now? Is no, that no, no, sorry, sorry, oh, I, I oh. meant, no, no. I meant I'll give Zero Mission a high B and Fusion okay. a low B, still in the same tier, but okay. Zero Mission okay. gets the high end of it and Fusion gets the lower end of it. And the reason is because Zero Mission does a thing that Fusion does where it's like, oh, you've reached this area, now go to this area. But it does it in a more subtle way. I don't want to tell you much about it because you'll get to experience it yourself, but it kind of tells you where to go, but in a very subtle way, and you still have to use your, like, Metroid brain problem-solving, puzzle-solving... And there's some cool stuff that they throw in there, too, right? Oh, uh, pardon, what'd there's you say? some cool lore stuff they throw in there. For yes, the yeah. yeah, yeah, some cool Chozo stuff they throw in there. And the whole, like, the art direction for Zero Mission is very good as well. I really, really, really love the art direction. For I'm that. waiting for them to add to NSO. Like, I, I've, been, yeah. I've been anticipating that announcement for a while. I, I was hoping that's what the recent NSO announcement would be, but... Right. I mean, I'm Sun glad it was great. Golden Sun. Right, yeah, it was, like, the next best thing. Yeah, um, so, I'm very I mean, excited to try those out. We got two of them, so yeah. that, that's, that's pretty special. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, um, Zero Mission is fantastic. I think you'll really like it, especially Looking if you're a fan of it. Super. And it's literally yeah. the only Metroid game I have not played. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, we can continue on. So here's a very fun fact about myself. Metro Prime 3 is next. And Metro Prime 3 was actually my very first Metroid game that I've ever played. I have not completed Interesting. it. But here is the story about Metroid Prime 3. When I was 13, me and my friend were like just out with my friend's dad in the mall and we were like oh let's go to gamestop let's see what they have there and we saw like the ps3 wii 360 games and then i saw metro prime 3 and i was like hey this is metroid like this is samus from super smash Bros. brawl like oh this is the metroid prime game that i've heard so many people talk about and then my friend's dad was like oh i'll, I'll just get you this game if you enjoy it so much and i was like oh thanks so i came home i played it and I was still in the Zelda mood. I was like, Skyward Sword, Twilight Princess, Wind Waker, all that. This was my first ever, like, m mature Nintendo game. Because I had, like, Twilight Princess. When I had Twilight Princess, I was like, sure. oh, it's so dark and gritty and, like, badass. And then I played Metro Prime 3 and I was like, oh, it's like a first-person shooter. It's like Halo. And I never played Halo or Call of Duty. So I was like, oh, it's so cool. It's one of the cool Nintendo games. And I played it, and I really enjoyed the beginning. I with this, yeah. With the what's that? It's the um, other space pirates. I think it was like Rundus, Gore, and Gendreda or something. Hunters. And, yeah, the yeah, the hunters. Yeah, 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 yeah. The hunters. Those are cool. Um, the voice acting was interesting. I was like, oh, it's interesting to see voice acting yeah. in a Nintendo that game. That was nice to see. The Ridley fight in the beginning. I I very vividly remember the Berserker Lord and the Ridley fight those were very iconic fights yeah they're they they had some pretty good like show pieces uh for yeah. the for, like they're like the game's a linear the prime that uh, this is uh, i i think um of the three metroid prime like it's not a thing it's a fact like mm -hmm. metroid prime 3 is very linear um yeah in comparison to those two um but 
you know, I, I did enjoy those first two levels. Like just because it was linear doesn't I, I still enjoyed it, right? Like linear yeah. isn't necessarily worse. Um, it's not too much of the Metroid formula, mm -hmm. right? Like, but those first two levels were pretty awesome. Yeah, it was a very yeah. cinematic kind of experience because yeah. that friend who I was with, he was a huge Halo fan, and he saw me playing this, and he was like, "Whoa, this stuff is on the Wii. Whoa, this is so cool. It looks like right. Halo." And I was like, "Yeah, it's amazing." But I will say, I did the intro, and then I went to the. I I I know exactly where I stopped. I stopped at the Rundus boss battle in Brio. I think that was Why? the planet Brio. Did it send you into depression? I no, I just couldn't beat him. I I didn't know oh. like what I I now know like more of what happens in the game, but I just couldn't beat this guy. I remember it was it was exactly the Rundus boss in Brio, and I could never beat him. And then I was like, I'm getting bored of this. I don't like first person shooter games. I'm gonna continue Skyward Sword. And then I continued Skyward Sword, and then I never played a Metroid game until 2019 when I played Super Metroid. And then, like, even then, I wasn't hooked on Metroid until shortly before Metroid Dread in 2021. So, yeah, that, that's my story with Prime 3. I enjoyed what I played, but I still haven't completed it. It is the only Prime game I haven't completed till the end, and I want to go back and finish it however I can because I, I'm i I'm holding out for a Switch release, but we'll see. I have other ways to play it, though. Like we haven't Wii U sitting right made here. any indication of where we place this game, but I'm going to just be frank with you. I think anything short of A would be insulting. Yeah, yeah, we'll give it an A. I we'll mean, you, a. if you want to argue B, I mean, I, I, could see, I can see how some people would argue Prime 3 is a B, but I think it's, it's, it's A tier. I would have to see how it ends up ranking in my personal favorites once I beat it, but I think I will enjoy it. I, I don't think I'll enjoy it more than two and one though. So we'll give it an A. I can I mean, see. I don't other think games. we're gonna have too many. Just like I, I think we're like what we're sort of thinking is fairly aligned here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Metro Prime Three is awesome. Um, you know, I, I cried when I beat that game for the first time, yeah. and then I started playing Hyper Mode, and Hyper Mode was really challenging. Um, I did love the cinematic approach. I thought the motion controls were a cool novelty, um, and you know, it was fun. Uh, I will say that I think that you know the future of like shooters is not what the Wii controls were, right? Mm -hmm. That was definitely like a, a side thing. I know some people really like the IR pointer, and it was cool, um, but I, whenever I revisit it, it always feels like it's always a mess to kind of set up the sensor bar and the Wii remote. Um, I mean, if you get your setup right, it's good, but it's just not convenient to have yeah. that set up all the time, right? I really just yeah. prefer Pro Controller, and with that third axis of, 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 of movement with the gyro, right? So you have, you know, your, your left stick, your right stick, and then the gyro. And in a conjunction of all of that, you can move and look around pretty well. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's like the, the standard, right? And so I guess what I'm saying is I it's almost like I'm, I'm, I'm giving uh, Prime 3 a little bit of a, of a con because it have motion controls, even though that's also kind of like what sets it apart at the same time. Um, I mean, I, I said I suggested A tier, right? So I'm not really speaking too ill of it. I think the game has a lot of amazing bosses and beautiful locales, but also because of how linear it feels. And I, I got, I just got to say, man, like I really, I really did not like that they just went with a singular beam style. Yeah. I, I missed the the stat, the the, um, the beams where you could change them around. Interesting. Um, so, so you yeah. only have the power beam throughout the entire game. Is that what it is? Yes. Uh, so Ooh. what's cool about Prime Three is that you do have different abilities. Like your missiles get better. Um, uh, you do. You can enter hyper mode, right? So that's kind of like yes. an alter alternative way. Of, it is. An, it's a temporary uh, power boost, and it's really cool. Actually, hyper mode was a cool functionality. And then you also could do more stuff with your grapple beam, yeah. like, like pulling off shields and, and energy draining. So they gave you a lot of cool new mechanics that I appreciated. And you also know, they there was a screw attack we got that in prime 2 as well um so uh, but i i just i i missed um changing around the beam so what would happen is your beam would just upgrade the same way it does it works in the 2d metroid games where oh, your beam just gets okay. stronger that's bait that's all they did but it, it, oh, okay in first person okay yeah. that's not yeah. that 
bad. It's but not it's still, bad. It's, still, it, it, yeah. it's just kind of like if we're, we're, we're going to be splitting hairs here, right? Because we're talking about really good games. Um, and, you know, Prime 3 is, is A tier. I guess what I'm saying is it's A tier, but I, 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 I anticipate putting a couple things above this game. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah. Um, More, especially no, in Metro Prime 1 and 2 bosses, switching beams in the heat of the moment is always kind of fun as well as annoying yeah. as it can be sometimes it is still fun yeah but I, I think that there the are remaster, that. um like they i, I think there, there, there could have been a better way to handle it and i'm optimistic that they will find better solutions for prime 4 because it's like actually a game that they're you know building with modern standards in mind and, and all yeah. of that um but uh i'm ready to move on to other m yeah uh tell me all about other m i don't think i will end up playing this game other games that i have not played i'm do you still have a I, i'm, I'm more Wii U? interested in actually i wouldn't say i'll never play other m if i think I you should play it i think i, I might think you should um, honestly I, I think other m gets a bad rap i think it's s tier yes yes i'm kidding <laughs> giving it the love that it deserves but um well i i actually do like other m of more than the games in D tier. I think it's a C tier uh, okay. game. Um, and let me make let me make the argument for it. So it, it is I a agree. more full game than Metroid 2. <laughs> I'll say that. Um, I'll, I'll say so. First off, back on the Wii, graphically, game was super impressive. Mm, like yeah. th this game had a budget, you know, for for the time. It, it looked it was pretty impressive. Um, and you know, it, it's it's kind of unique, right? Because it's it's not quite like the the Metroid Prime games. It's not quite a side scrolling Metroid game either. It's its own thing. Uh, it's kind of like taking the 2D Metroid games and putting them into 3D, like more. It's, all, other it's like a almost, Mario 3D Land situation. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, actually. Um, and so, you know, uh, it's interesting because they tried to incorporate the first person element as well. Um, and they made a weird decision, right? So back um, on the Nintendo Wii, you would typically, most of your core games, right? You would play with the Wii Remote, holding it vertically, and the nunchuck, right? And then that would connect. And so that would kind of offer your sort of pretty much standard style controls. Of course, you're missing one analog stick, but whatever. That was just, that's just the way things were on the Wii. Um, and so it was pretty cool. But for other M, given that it was more, it was very much in line with a lot of 2D Metroid games, there weren't that many button combinations. And they were actually, and they decided to to have you play the game side with a Wii Remote sideways. Mm -hmm. Right, so you would have the you had the the, um, the D pad to the left. Um, you had the A and B buttons you could press, and the one and two buttons. Uh, I think I, I don't remember what plus or minus did, but the, the, yeah. there wasn't that many button options. You didn't need them, um, and so you played like the game like that, yeah, as if you were playing kind of like a, like an old school Metroid game. And so from that perspective, it was kind of a neat novelty, but um, there was this other cool mechanic that they, uh, that they implemented where you could switch from you know the third person style. Um, into first person mode, which is actually really cool. So you can switch into first person mode, you see everything from obviously a different perspective, literally, and you can shoot around and aim and see the world in a different way. And it was a very cool thing that they did. But the way you would do it is by He's changing from right? side, like by, yeah, by changing from sideways to vertically and aiming around, which was just, it was annoying to do that. Like if you're holding the game like this, and then you have to let go, and <laughs> like that, that take it takes away from the immersion, right? Yeah. It, it breaks, it breaks my 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 engagement and immersion and and, and immersion. My brain is, is, is immersion, right? It breaks away my immersion. Um, but anyways, um, that part wasn't amazing. And then there was other that this is other part where like there are certain moments in the game where you would just you, you you wouldn't be able to progress at all or back out you would have to search on screen for something going on like basically you know where's waldo like the books yeah. where you have to find the guy with a mm -hmm. red and white striped shirt somewhere in this big picture yeah. with a whole bunch of things they would basically do that in other m a few different times and there was a couple times i was stuck there for hours <laughs> and you and and like you just you basically just have to point at something that seems not so obvious. And yeah, like, oh, yeah, there it is. 
And so I think that that definitely needed some tweaking because that was really annoying. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. so there were those weird decisions that I think kind of hampered the game. Plus the divisive story. I think they, you know, they made Samus yeah. a little bit too emotional. And there, there's a lot of opinions yeah, on that. Th that was the biggest thing for me because I've seen a lot of, I wouldn't say, yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of discourse on how they handled the story of that game. Because yeah. Samus just doesn't really feel like Samus. Adam wasn't what people thought Adam would be like. Um, how they, Samus they, they had they to wait for Adam's permission to use all her items and all that. It just yeah. didn't, it just fell out of character. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the gameplay, you know, outside of those, those weird uh, moments, gameplay is actually really good. Like moving around using the speed booster using different sam uh, slowly unlocking samus's different abilities it was a metroidvania there was backtracking where you could do different things and there were some amazing boss fights the game looked really cool um like samus had some awesome uh, powers like and she could like grapple and throw enemies like it was the game was cinematic and it was badass um but because of those issues, because of the annoyances, because of the story problems, you know, I think I yeah. think C rank is is where it kind of belongs. I think C is good. Yeah. I I think it would be interesting if they revisit this kind of style, in, in like a two point five isometric kind of. I like, I'm not opposed to it. I, I guess the challenge. Like, is... Imagine if Metroid Six is like that. Whatever Mercury Steam does next, but it's better, and it doesn't like have weird like puzzle solving weird yeah. control schemes um, but it's in terms I think of what I would prefer yeah. is that they stick with 2d but metroid dread does have those moments where it pulls behind the shoulder yeah. there's even some uh, uh you know cutscenes where you see in first person maybe it blended a few more elements like that where you do see maybe sometimes yeah. go in, into like a third person mode like i'm okay with a little bit more of a hybridization but i think they should still keep like that 2d metroid gameplay Mm -hmm. um but i mean i I'm, I'm not against with you know taking some cues from the other from the good parts of other m you know and implementing yeah. them into future metroid games and yeah i mean i think you're right that there is a there is kind of like a place where we could have this as well but it's kind of like it would be like a third pillar of metroid and the thing is when you kind of look at metroid right now like let's just get metroid prime 4 out you know um yeah. and then we'll, 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 let's see where we go from there because yeah like we don't even have a third pillar of of uh zelda right now oh, yeah. we're, we're still waiting on that on the on the 2d uh um zelda so oh although actually you could argue we do have there is an argument made for third pillar zelda warriors now we have we have well no i was gonna i'm i'm talking about more like mainline games right mm -hmm. so like because you know mario then has a million pillars oh yeah um, i'm talking i'm just talking about mainline games so what i mean is like we have um obviously you know top down zelda right but then you also have now open air zelda Mm -hmm. But the thing is, before uh, Open Air yes. Zelda, there was 3D Zelda that, you know, was a little linear, right? Yeah. So, and a lot of fans missed that. So that could arguably be a third pillar. Yeah. They're not going to do it. Because a lot of what it, people are missing probably. from Breath of the yeah. Wild and Tears of the Kingdom may not be from A Link to the Past and Minish Cap and stuff. It was more Twilight yeah. Princess, Ocarina of Time and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so, you know, what's most likely going to happen, though, is they're just going to take some ideas from that hypothetical third pillar, just implement them into future games, right? And so... That's the same argument I'm making yeah. for other M. Cool ideas. We could implement them into the other two styles of Metroid in the future, but probably I just it just doesn't seem realistic yeah. that we'll see that. Yeah, for me, like I've seen gameplay of Other M when it was announced and when people were playing it and stuff. It looked cool, but hearing the discourse about it made me a little hesitant. And of course, hearing people talk about a game is very different from you yourself experiencing the game like for yourself but i feel like if they ever revisit something like this and do it right maybe in the very very far future after metroid 6 or something it, it would be cool but i think they have learned their lessons from other m to kind of not make the same mistakes that they did yeah because right after i wouldn't say right after other m after other m they kind of went back to the drawing board remembered who samus was and i think We'll get to Dread later, but I think Dread has the best representation yeah, of Samus as a character it, it, ever. It, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I definitely agree with you. I think yeah. now Nintendo has shown, or Saka, Yoshio Sakamoto has shown that they understand the, well, how Metroid should be branded. Yep. And it'll be interesting to see if that carries over to Metroid Prime 4, because that's being oh, produced yeah. by Kensuke Tanabe, 
right? So it's a different different person. Um, so we'll we'll see. On uh, the thing is, Gensuke Tanabe is behind the, the prior Prime games, yeah. right? I mean, he's he's already been making some really good Nintendo games today. So it's not like he's he's not prepared to make another good game. Just the question is, is his thinking in line with Yoshio yeah. Sakamoto, the creator of the original Metroid games? And so we'll see. But uh, I think it. Yeah. Any no, last words it, on other M? I I bought it for seven dollars when oh. it, it, it for like a bargain bin thing back in the oh, day, nice. right? This is keep in mind this is a long time ago. This is what we're in twenty twenty four, so it was two thousand and ten, right? Yeah, 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 I guess so. I think I was, it, was. it was. I was I was in I was I was young. Yeah, yeah. I think if we're going in the same order. I think we're finally. Do you want to ready. continue to go in the same order? Um, up to you. Do you want to go primary master? Because I was about to say, I think we're ready oh. for the first S tier. Oh my god. You have, you have the, there's both of them. I didn't realize. I thought yeah. you were just going to assume they were the same thing. Do, do, I think we can talk about both at the same time, but I think we're in agreement that that's okay. our first S tier. Yeah. 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 Uh, that, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Metroid, um I think... Yeah, yeah. yeah a pr a prime, I I'll, I'll I'll club Prime, one, GameCube, Wii, uh, Wii U, Prime Trilogy, version of one, and Switch, all into one thing. So Prime One was very interesting because, of course, I've heard so many like, very positive, things about Metroid Prime. I even like saw an article once, which, like the headline of the article was saying. Metroid Prime is the Citizen Kane of video games. And I read that article and I was like, I don't remember exactly what it said, but I I remember the article was making that claim and saying like in terms of like gameplay innovation, it is one of the highest levels of like gameplay innovation you can ever find in a video game at that time. And I really agree. Um before Prime I had played a bit of Prime 3, so I kind of understood the whole first-person kind of thing going on with that. But when I completed Metroid Prime for the first time, I completed it on Wii U, which is sitting right here next to me. And I played it with the motion controls. So playing with the motion controls was good, but sometimes I would think in my head, how would this feel like to play with tank controls? How would it feel like to play without like having free range aiming like that but i will also say this i have recommended prime one to a few other people on the switch version who are fans of like actual fps games call of duty halo doom yeah. a lot of that and their biggest complaint coming out of prime one was the gunplay wasn't as good the combat wasn't as good the exploration was because they also had experience coming from games like Dark Souls. And every time they would play a From Software game, I'd be like, it's a Metroidvania, it's a Metroidvania. And then they played Metro Prime 1 and they're like, hey, this feels like Dark Souls. And what did, what did he describe yeah. it as? Metroid. Oh, and then their mind was blown. So a lot of 3D Metroidvania games, Dark Souls, even like maybe like later 3d zeldas because i can see how this took inspiration from 3d zelda as well but this is one of the best exploration games ever in terms of like a linear kind of exploration like yeah no yeah. um i i agree um that in terms of exploration it's really good and i think it's interesting you bring up the combat stuff because yeah. i've been really thinking about lately like how what can the Metroid series do to evolve? Um, and I think when it comes to the, the Prime series, like, yeah, I, I think they do need to rethink how they how they handle combat um, because compared to other first person shooters, it it, 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 it needs some work, right? Yeah, it's a little Prime stiffer Masters. in the Prime games. Yeah, but what's, yeah. Interesting, what's interesting about Prime Masters, they do add like a rapid fire, um, you know, an inherent rapid fire yeah. when you press when you press a shoot button, you shoot, you do a you burst shot, right? Mm -hmm. That's not that's not how the original release is, and so I think that's a little bit of them trying to modernize it a bit. Um, but I think you you and I kind of agree that you know in order to really modernize, you basically have to make a new game. Yeah. Uh, so you know you can't really accomplish that with a remaster without 
it, making a new game. Oh yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, so it's interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was Prime Master. They, they did a fantastic job of modernizing the game in a lot of ways. Um, visually, I would argue it's one of the most impressive games on Switch. Um, they a lot the accessibility options are should not be understated. The new art is really cool. And yeah, the, 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 the modern switch controls make a big difference. Um, some criticisms. Um, the lighting engine's amazing. But there are mo but there are some parts of the game where it gets extremely dark. Um, and in prior games, you in the initial release, you could light your way a bit with the with the with arm your can. beam. Yeah, you can't do that now. They're actually it's almost I, it feels like a design choice. Like maybe they were thinking, oh, you should just actually use the X-ray visor. And I'll say. I think the X-ray visor and, and throw visor are better now, but people don't like using those visors too much. Yeah. So there's there's a little bit a little bit of that, but overall, I mean, it's still a masterpiece. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like Prime One good. and Prime Two have some weird visual hiccups with their visors. Yeah, thermal visor was weird, and X-ray visor was very weird in the original like Prime Trilogy version I played. And then I recently played Prime 2, and the dark visor in that one was also very weird to look at. But oh, the, I think, yeah. yeah, I think I think Prime Remastered is a phenomenal remaster. When I saw it in the Nintendo Direct for the first time, I was mind blown at how yeah. like amazing it looks. It is, like many say, it is the best looking game on the Switch. It looks, runs, feels amazing. And if this is any indication of what Metro Prime 4 will look like, then we're in yes three. yes yeah yeah but well, one thing I, I i do want to say one thing about metric prime i um i think it is very akin to ocarina of time in the sense that um a lot of people's criticism if you can even call this a criticism of ocarina of time was that it was a link to the past in 3d oh with sure. a different story no yeah like, so metro yeah. prime is, su is, is super metroid in 3D. it is yeah. and i feel like metro prime does that no a great, little though. bit more i will cut retro studio some slack because it was their first time doing something like this they had a monumental like achievement and they did phenomenally with it but they had to go based off of something that really worked before and they had to go off of super metroid so you can see that in the areas you can see like Chosa Ruins feels like Brinstar. Uh, Fendrana Drifts feels like something else, or like uh, Magmore Caverns mm -hmm. feels like Norfair. So it feels like Super Metroid, but it feels like a three dimensional, more expansive version of it. And what my. Uh, what I love the most about Metroid Prime is when I was playing it, I was actively listening to a lot of the developer interviews that were coming out around that time. Because 2021, sure. uh, I think it was Kiwi Talks. He was doing a lot of interviews with ex Retro Studios employees. Yeah, and before seeing, it was even announced. Yeah. Seeing how like they worked on the game, their thought process, their design process of various bosses, various like abilities that samus had like the one of the coolest things ever was how um i think mike wicken was saying like um miyamoto one day came and told us what if samus had bug eyes and they didn't know what to think of that because like miyamoto would give them like riddles like that here yeah. and there and they they didn't know what that mean like what that meant until they were like hey what if by bug eyes he means like different visors and then that's what how the idea of visors came into play. So there are so many things that Prime One established: visors, scanning, out, scanning, yeah. swapping beams on the fly, the way you get into the morph ball, get out of the morph ball, the spider ball in 3D, the boost ball. It established so much of that, and it's really like kind of expanded on so much in the other Prime games, but. One thing I do want to ask you, I mean, we'll get into this later, but sure. do you think this is the best Prime game? And if so, why do you think it's the best Prime game? Well, so, and uh, this is me just speaking on Metro Prime 1 as a whole, right? Like, if we want to start arguing versions, that's, I don't want to get into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, this is, I mean, this is Prime 1 as but, a whole, yeah. But the answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. Metroid Prime is is. I mean, it it 
it was my first experience to metroid right so it has a little bit of that benefit of being kind of like ocarina of time or was yeah. my first experience with zelda um and so like i fell in love with the series right but the thing is like so for example obviously you know i mean a lot of this is all opinion right but like i just think about like the music for example um there are songs in metro prime 3 i love there are songs in metro prime 2 i love but most of this music i love from metroid prime comes yeah. from metroid prime one right i yeah, was talking super I, iconic songs yeah and i'll also say i was i was mentioning earlier how i didn't like how they went to the one singular beam in prime three even though they had some other they added other cool abilities which i appreciated but they kind of went away from the, the switching the beam mechanics which i thought which i thought was a really cool thing and in prime two they still have the switching of beams which i appreciate but they added an ammo system uh, ammo which system. i did not like because God, that was annoying. You, it's one of the, the fun things about metroid is you can sh just shoot things all willy-nilly right yeah. that's fun and so the ammo system makes it less fun i would argue now yeah. you could say it kind of adds more of like a, a dark soulsy resident evil souls like not resident evil soulsy but oh, i mean yeah yeah it, it just this idea you have to you conserve have to be, your resources exactly yeah um and so there, i i kind of understand it from that perspective but also i mean i just i i think the end result is i didn't like it in prime 2. Yeah. I, I like prime 2 a lot and we'll get to that but i just mean like the ammunition system i think took away from yeah. the fun of changing around your beams and having them so you know like that that to me is big um there are some great boss fights in the series but i i guess i you know prime 2 i've actually never finished ah um, interesting. yeah i've gone i've gone to the point where i've been all the i've been quadraxis like the, the like the last big boss before the end but i have to get all the keys right yeah and so it's it's a tougher game to finish than prime one uh that's not necessarily a con but i i, I think that prime one's already a pretty hard game it's not as inviting to, it's not inviting to a lot of people and then prime 2 is even less so right yeah and prime 3 is super easy by comparison yeah. but which you still found challenging as a kid like just to kind of speak oh, to yeah. the difficulty of the prime games um but yeah i mean you know between just the over i actually really like chosen ruins and fendrena yeah. i i fendrena is one of my favorite areas in the series they're so just so beautiful especially yeah, once so... you get to the depths of fendrena and the music oh. changes that is that's fantastic actually I mean, that's something i actually really like about um metro prime one is that like there's like a deeper part of chosen ruins there's a deeper yeah. part of, of fendrana and so you're like and there's, there's also a deeper part of of um the phase, phase on mines. mines yeah right and it, so it, it's it's even though there's like what i guess five world like areas to explore yeah. but there's actually it's it's kind of like more because there's deeper yeah. areas within the bigger areas right and so let me even not though forget you think to you've mention... seen everything you haven't seen everything exactly and exactly. even when you go back to talon overworld like halfway through the game the music changes so you know like things are starting to pick up things are yeah. different and also yeah. town overworld's amazing yeah like, I, it's hard to town overworld's like one of the most beautiful areas in video games oh yeah to me yeah. so like when i got it on switch when i was playing the remastered version i just stayed in talon overworld for like 10 seconds looking up at the sky waiting for the raindrops to hit samus's visor i was like yes and yeah and so like things like that like you know metroid prime 2 doesn't have that you know it has some cool areas but it it's not the same you know it, it's yeah metro prime 2 is scary yeah, it's, it's Metroid like, Prime 2 is more high octane with its Yeah, it, it, it is it is a more um Metroid Prime 2 feels yeah. more like a horror game. Yeah. You're not you're not like, oh, this is a beautiful place. You're like, oh shit, this is messed up. Because I was even gonna say Sanctuary Ruins, like Sanctuary Ruins looks or say Sanctuary there Fortress pretty looks parts. really cool. Yeah. But everything is out to get you and it's kinda like yeah. It's a very hostile environment. I think that's the best way to describe Prime 2. It's very hostile. Yes. Whereas Prime 1 is very atmospheric, ambient. It's just kind a of, of vibes. Yeah. There's, a, yeah. there's a, there more variety to the environments, I would yeah. say, in, in, from that perspective. Um, and then the beginning of the game, I would argue it's one of the, beginning, one of the best beginnings in games, period. Yeah. Like, getting into the, you know, the space frigate and then exploring the that. The queen. The find the parasite queen the escape the escape sequence uh, ridley like all of that like 
and that was like Samus's first moment as a, a, in 3D, right? Yeah. It's like what a special way I, to like. I I the, love the, the animation of her jumping out of the ship, doing the flip, iconic landing, and then it going like 360 degrees around. It's like in your face, like Metroid is in 3D, 3D. and then it goes straight into the visor first person. That's it's so so cool how they did that. It yeah. is. It is. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, we could go on and on, but Metroid Prime. Yeah, it's it's absolutely yeah. S tier, and it is the best of the Prime games. So yeah, with that, one final thing I want to talk about is we talked about switching the beams and the visors. I think sure. the final boss of this game does that the best. The first phase, yes. the first like chunk of it was switching your beams to like match the color, and then the second phase was matching your visor so you can see where the Metroid Prime actually is. So that was a very tedious and annoying but fun boss fight. But anyways, I mean, it, it kind of yeah. forces you to use all of your abilities, which I yeah. think is is actually pretty nice to, to see in a final boss fight. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a very epic way to end the game. Yeah. So also, you good. can put Prime One, like the original Prime One, up there as well in S. So yeah, um, I would. We'll, we'll, we'll keep. I would say remastered would... is a better experience. It is a better experience now, hmm. but. Metro Prime 1 I would say is a better experience for its time. Yes, it has more of the legacy. So I don't I don't know how you want to organize this, right? Um yeah. because then maybe you could argue well Metro 2, you know, you said yeah. it's low because it's, it's it hasn't aged well and so yeah. I mean I, I guess you know all right, I'll No, no, no by no. that. Yeah. Is it, how how do you want to do it? I uh I think we'll keep it like this. Okay. I think right. I think so. It's I more so it's about like how we play, how we enjoy and receive them now. Yes, I think we'll okay. keep it like that. All right. Well, all right. I got another S tier game. Yes. And yes. It's the like... most immersive morph ball simulator ever. Metro Prime Pinball. You know, jokes aside, is one of my favorite spinoffs ever. Yeah. Like, let me just be straight with you. Metro Prime Pinball to me is, I, I think it's bottom of B tier. That's how good I think it is. Am I crazy? I don't think so. I mean, I haven't played the game, but it seems to be pretty fun. And I think the pinball mechanic, like the pinball gimmick is like perfect for Metroid. And what's funny is um, I was in an arcade this past weekend for a friend's birthday party and I saw all these like pinball machines and in my head I was like, they should have like a Metro an actual pinball machine, pinball. like an actual yeah. machine, not like the DS game. That would be pretty cool. So the thing with Metro Prime Pinball, right? So it came out for Nintendo DS and it came with a rumble pack, right? So the way the DS worked, you put your, you know, your little cartridges inside the top of the DS, right? Where like the the, the big platform piece, but there's another side, um, the front side where you could put in Game Boy Advance games for backwards compatibility, right? But sometimes Nintendo would use that for other reasons, including in a, ba a, a rumble pack. So they literally mm -hmm. gave you a, a cartridge that looked like a Game Boy Advance game. It was black. You put it into your DS and it would turn it, it, it would give your DS rumble. Yeah, which is so cool, and it came That's with Metro cool. Prime Pinball. So the game had Rumble, which is rare for a DS game, right? So that was nice. already amazing. <laughs> but also Prime Pinball, you, you brought up a good point. Like it's a cool novelty because Sam is actually you know in Morph Ball is Pinball. Yeah. Like they had that, but also visually, you know, playing on both screens, like especially then because that was kind of like that that first time it was really cool. But I would say even now, you know, if there is somehow to, some way to give us a modern version of that game, it would be amazing. Um, but something else about it is that you would fight bosses, right? Yeah. Like there are moments where you would turn into Samus, like you would transfer, like into fight into normal mode, right? In humanoid mode, like outside of Morph Ball, and you'd be shooting around, killing parasites and space pirates and boss fights, like so. It included combat within the pinball game. Pinball gameplay yeah. had this really cool rumble, had a beautiful aesthetic. I mean, it 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 is definitely like. It's basically another version of Metroid Prime because it's it's all based off the Metroid Prime story and, and characters, but it's it's just so cool. Yeah, I mean it's one of my favorite spinoffs. I mean I can see how you could be like, yeah, but it's just pinball, but it's 
They put a lot of effort into it. A lot of work into it's it. It's goaded pinball. It's yeah. pinball done. It's like I thought, like I'm not joking. It is my favorite pinball game of all time. And I nice. think that says something because pinball pinball is like its own thing. So, mm. you know. That's cool. Looking yeah. forward to your comments where people are like, how could you put pinball so high? <laughs> it's peak. Yeah. Also, uh, yeah. I think we'll move on to Sam's Returns. Sure. I think don't don't rank it yet. I need to say my bit about Samus Returns okay. before anything. I recently completed Samus Returns. I uh, I don't know how to feel about the game. I think it was good. I think it was decent. I think it might be my least favorite 2D Metroid game. And I I will say this. Tough. Yeah, this is going to be tough. I enjoyed going through the game but there were various things that really really just kind of didn't hit right with me i think the melee counter was excessively overused and i was very very annoyed by that almost every single enemy required the melee counter and if you don't use the melee counter you probably won't successfully beat them and that was very annoying um the bosses were fun especially the actually no the bosses were not fun the what i mean to say is the bosses were well designed they're good metroid bosses in how they move how they attack you how you're supposed to attack them you can't just go in guns blazing right i noticed that even the slightest like attack that you might miss even the slightest attack that you might mess up if you like get hit by like the smallest orb or if you like fall down on like some like if, if some metroid like makes the floor electric you fall down on the floor by mistake you lose so much energy so I was dying constantly on a lot of these boss fights. And sometimes like especially the later boss fights, you have to be like frame perfect almost to like make sure you're hitting them right and stuff. It got very, very annoying. I will say I can see what a lot of this game was trying to do, but as I played this game, my appreciation for Metroid Dread significantly increased. Because I was like, I'm seeing a lot of what this game is doing, and everything that it's doing is done so much better in Dread. And then, what else did I know? Oh yeah, one thing that kind of turned me off as well was the music and the sound effects. A lot of it was taken from other Metroid games, especially Metroid Prime. So to me, I was like, the sounds of a Metroid game are what make it stand out from other Metroid games. And with this game borrowing like the item sound effect and the saving sound effect and the loading into the game sound effect and some songs like Magmore Caverns and all that, it just almost made it feel like it didn't have its own kind of identity. This is the hottest take I might have ever say on my entire Nish Quick Pops channel, but that is it. I will, right. I, I will, I will put you. it in a high C I un tier. I unfriend you. <laughs> We're not friends anymore. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's tough because we're trying to like uh, come to an agreement on where we should put these things. Um, the thing is, I'm high on Samus Returns. Samus Returns is like my 3DS Swan song. Like, I yeah. loved it. The the difficulty made me like it more. Yeah. Um, like. I, I the thing is, I mean, I think some of the things you're talking about are kind of like the artifacts of what it is, because it is a mm -hmm. remake of a Game Boy game, right? Exactly. And so part of it is kind of staying true to what that game is, by, but they also added new elements, like the melee attack, I think, was a cool thing. And, you know, it was a good foundation for what became Dread. Right? Yeah. And so, like, you know, it was a stepping stone. Um, and... I mean, I guess... I mean... They just did some cool things. Like, yeah, they add, the like, AI the, abilities the... are cool. I liked how the AI abilities were Oh, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. those are cool. The thing is, it's way more fresh for you also, right? So yeah. your opinion is, is raw. Yeah. And so you could, I could, I could so, so two things. One, 
I think in your favor, you have a lot. It's really fresh. You know what you're talking about. You remember a lot of it, a lot of more of it. But also, because it's raw, you maybe haven't had, had as much time to dissect it. I maybe. haven't had time to sit on it. Yeah, maybe because maybe, like, that's you know happened what? with me with yeah. games. Like a good example is Xenoblade Two. Like I loved Xenoblade Two when I finished it. It was like a very yeah. great emotional experience. But my appreciation grew after 3 was announced, after I beat 3, after Future Redeemed was announced, after I beat Future Redeemed. Then I go back and see all the things in 2 and I appreciate it so much more. That might be the same with Samus Returns. Because if I Maybe. go back and play Dread, I might be like, oh, this is like a lot of things that were sure. evolved in Dread. Well, you, you played it after Dread though, right? I did play it after Dread. And so, that's I... another thing, like I was talking to some friends and they were like, what if you played this before Dread? And I, I was like, maybe I would have had I think a better liked appreciation it for it. Yeah, especially you've played it back in 2017 when it came out. Yeah. Where our expectations weren't as high. Because Met Metroid Dread, like, it changes our expectations for 2D Metroid moving yeah. forward. Right? It is a new standard for what 2D Metroid should be. And anything less than that is going to be disappointing. Yeah. Right? So I, I kind of... I kind of see where, where you're coming from, and I mean, in fairness to the to the tier list, right? The tier list is is it's not just about how good it was at the time, right? Or else I would say that the original Metro Prime should be at the very very top yeah. to the left, right? But it's not. It's more about. It, it feels like it's a little bit of a hybrid, but I think it's it is definitely more so leaning yeah. where like it's about what is good now, right? Yeah. And so, you know, to that end, I I guess I see where you're coming from. It hurts me to like be like, hey, you know, Samus Returns. Yeah. Uh, it, like it, it's a to me, it's a very. Good I game. I have appreciation for it as well. And one thing, did you I beat it? I did beat, you beat it. it. So yes. did you see um the the Ridley? Like yes. was it? I did. Ridley? I did Ridley. I oh, some people hate that they added that. I love. I I think it was good. I think it was a good fight. It was annoying though. It was an annoying fight, but it was. Like annoying in the sense that like it was long and grueling, and I sounds, had so many all attempts. Are exciting to me, like yeah. Like, see, it's like, I love that. I I will say, Samus Returns boss fights. Um, aside from the Metroids, like the Metroids are like in a league of its own. But I'm gonna say the Digger Knot, the Metroid Queen, and Ridley. They are very, very, very well designed boss fights in how you use your abilities, how you have to take down the boss, how you have to do different things to manipulate the boss and to get an advantage. I just hated that there were times where I felt like I had to do like a perfect run without getting hit. Because if I was hit like twice, I felt like I would die. But also, I think I beat that game without getting all the energy tanks. I got most of them. I got at least eight, if not more, but I still found it very difficult. But that's also, again, that's what Metroid is. That's what Metroid 2 was as well. So that's not a super knock against it. Yeah. You and know like, what? Um, yeah. Can we, so can we compromise and say, I mean, it, to me, it's either bottom of, uh, based off, you know, like I, I think bottom of B is good. I think. Oh, I'll send, uh, bottom of B. You want to put it bottom of B? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, All right, we'll or or top of C. I was I was gonna I was gonna settle for top of C, but uh, I don't I mind mean, top of C actually. You prefer top of C? Yes, I I think we can leave so, it there. I mean, the thing is, like, uh, like, it's definitely better than 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 Hunters and Metroid Other M. But is it as heralded as the goat that is Metroid Prime Pinball? And it's not. Well, Metro Prime Pinball is the best pinball game, but right. Samus Returns gonna... is not the best 2D Metro game. All right, game. so I'll, I'll let this be here for now. I'm not going to fight it, but I will say this. There can't be anything under... There can't be anything between Samus Returns and Pinball. Like, if you want to put something yes, else yes, in B tier, yeah. like, then we're going well, I... to need to shake up. With, with, with what we have remaining, I think we'll be all right. I think so, too. I also kind of like the idea of not going, like beyond three per tier but we'll yeah. we'll see how i mean if it if it's, if it's there it's there right yeah um so where do you want to go next oh. do you want to just jump into re to dread because that's yeah uh we'll jump into dread and we can be a little more quicker with these but yeah let's jump into dread I, well, um, well, we kind of uh, i guess it's cool to kind of jump into dread now because dread is you know Samus returns leads into dread right yeah and honestly to me metroid dread is the best 2d metroid game oh without a doubt it, and what I love so much about Dread is it feels so good to play. It is such a fluid game. Samus is so fast, so nimble, so quick. 
and just even like the wall jumping like that was one thing i found really difficult in games like uh, super metroid even metroid fusion and zero mission i had a little trouble with the wall jumping in metroid dread you just you just bounce off the walls it just feels so good to move and play that game yeah metroid dread is so good that if i didn't play metroid prime as a kid i could almost see myself doing it like like uh, there are some people who like metroid dread more than metroid prime and mm -hmm. that like i don't agree but it's definitely like huh i see what you're saying yeah right? like i don't i don't think i don't think it's a crazy take i think it should yeah. be an unpopular take but I think it's not a crazy take. Yeah. And like, I mean, I think you bring up fantastic points. Like it's, I'm putting it here, but I don't know if you agree. Um, I, this is where I think it belongs, but yeah, I don't know. Do you want to, do you want to, I, I or? think it can stay in S I will say, okay. um, a spoiler for a little later into the video. Dread, I think is the best 2d Metroid game. It we agree. is not my favorite personal favorite 2d metro game okay and okay I, I i think it should stay in s though because it deserves to be there okay the reason the the one thing that i didn't like about metroid dread everything was perfect the gameplay was perfect samus felt good to play as the story is the best story in a metroid game i think which is crazy because i don't hype up metroid as a story heavy game but Metroid Dread had a great story, and even a- I would argue like a... that Metroid's story is better than Zelda's story. Yes, you could argue that. Yes, yeah. I think you could argue that, I mean, that. it's yes. at least more thought out. Yes. And with the Dread, it had a f absolutely phenomenal ending, like one of the best climaxes of the series. But my big knock against Dread, which was really kind of disappointing, was the music. I don't remember a single song from Dread. And Berenia. that's kind of sad. Yeah, Berenia, Berenia, like, some of those songs were... Berenia's pretty good. Yeah, but, like, it's no Brinstar Red Soil. It's no... Well, lower, um, low, but the thing is, it's Dread, no does have, Dread does have lower Brinstar, which is pretty good. I mean, it's basically just, like, a modern version of Brinstar. So yeah. I, it's really good. But otherwise, I agree with you. I, 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 I don't disagree with your overall point that like the music leaves something to be desired compared to some of the greats we've heard and like like i i what i wish i wished every background was like a a real you know slapper like it was yeah. definitely you know a bangers with the what the the the, yeah. the the cool you know phrase i or lingo i wanted to use but uh yeah i mean i i um i agree with that uh, there are some good ones, but I, I wish that it was more well-rounded. And I mean, like none of the music was bad, but some of them were just kind of like, "Yep, yeah. this is music for it uh, was, the grass area." Yeah, it was this all is right. The cave. It, it was right. ambient, but it wasn't like Metroid Prime One or yeah. Super Metroid to me. I mean, you also so, could argue that two D Metroid games didn't have extremely iconic music. I think Fusion had a great soundtrack. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I, maybe, I only maybe I should, I should, I should revisit them, yeah. um, and kind of, you know. I think I, the I think prime part games of the problem is the because, best, though. But I think, because, um, yeah. yeah, no, I agree with you. I guess the point I wanted to make is just that, uh, because the before Dread, all the other two D games were made for older consoles, like you know, eight bit, sixteen bit mm -hmm. systems. There's not, you know, there's not like really high quality yeah. music that's been made because they're all such old games. But that doesn't mean it can't be bad because I, I love some old, you know, like yeah. like tracks, right? I, I think I should I should revisit them. Yeah, um, especially yeah. um, I recently went back and listened to some of the songs from Super Metroid and I was blown away by what they did with such little hardware. Oh, like, actually... Yeah, there's Meridia in Super Metroid. Yeah, you use it in your podcast. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's, and it's amazing. to me, yeah. it's um um the best one to me is the end credits of Super Metroid. It's like okay. the first time you hear like Samus's theme, that fanfare, and it's it almost feels like a symphony, but it's on like a SNES yeah. game. And right, which is an incredible yeah, it's accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mo 
I think that's a good segue into Super Metroid. We can do Super Metroid next. Sure. I think if we're do do you do you want to do the three per tier thing? I mean, I it, it, that'll become a problem because you put Prime Trilogy. Oh yeah, and then we have but, two Metroid Primes in S tier. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, uh, three originals is is a good yeah. Because the thing is, yeah, Metroid Prime and Trilogy, that's like yeah, they're just extra versions. I will say, uh, like I said before, the Super Metroid might be my preferred metroid 2d experience but i think dread is a better game so i think it should either go high a or low s and that, yeah. that that's my that's my opinion i will say super metroid to me is a game when i played it it reminded me why i love video games because it is such a it, it has the essence of a game it has very tight gameplay very rewarding gameplay very rewarding exploration very like immersive atmosphere very iconic art direction the art direction is amazing and it just makes you feel so immersed in the game and you feel so rewarded in all the small little things you accomplish in that game and it's it's just amazing. I think it's aged yeah. phenomenally. Even though it's like a 1994 game, it's aged absolutely phenomenally. And it, uh, I I always say this to people, and it doesn't make sense, but I think you'll understand what I mean by this. Super Metroid is the most video game video game of all time. It is just a game like, <laughs> and you put it in F. Yes, <laughs> after that. But I think Super Metroid embodies so much of what makes a good video game in its core it's it's so hard to explain but it's i i truly feel sure that. no so. i i see where you're coming from um yeah so i mean my perspective i i i've played through and beat through metroid and i remember really enjoying it um i maybe I need to play it a second time so i can better sort of define for myself where it ranks um, I, I agree with the sentiment that Super Metroid should be at least considered to be the second best 2D Metroid ever. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, you can argue I, I, it's the I, first. I'll, it's, I'll be good with that if it's second yeah. best, even though it's my personal favorite. I'm good right. with like, I Right. Mean, I'm just talking about, like, for everyone. Like, we're talking yeah. about... Although I would argue that, from what I've heard, is your mission, and then with Fusion, they're maybe easier to get into mm -hmm. because you can just kind of blitz the story, yeah, but then... Quicker. That doesn't mean they're necessarily better, right? Um, yeah, I, I guess where where I'm really having trouble is, I agree it's either A tier. I personally don't want to put it in S tier. That that's me. Um, I don't feel like it belongs there. Um, but you know, maybe I'm maybe I'm a heathen for that. I um, I think I think high A is good. I think. But I guess the question good. is, do you, do you think it goes? It goes. So it goes. It's above Metroid Prime 2 and 3? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, yes. I guess because you're compromising with me, because I don't want an S tier, I'll compromise with you and let it go above yeah. Prime 2 and 3. Um, so do you want to just jump to 2 then? Yes, we'll jump to 2. Um, 2 is great. I, I think I love... 2 should be he held above yeah. 3. Yes, I, I love 2. Even though I... I haven't beaten 2, I think it should be held above it. Yeah. Um, because 1... It, it has multiple beams. Yeah. It, it's super challenging, which is what I like. And um, it's not as linear, which is Two better. did a very, me. very good job with its dual world thing. With the light world, dark world stuff. Great some atmosphere. things are affected in the dark world. And you go back to the light world and they've changed. That was very, very, very well done. And I think the biggest praise... I can give Prime 2 is the backtracking is so manageable. It is so manageable. Like, imagine, like, everyone talks about Metro Prime. Like, imagine you're in freaking um, Phase on Mines. You have to go all the way back to Talon Overworld. You have to go through, like, uh, Magmore Caverns. You have to go through Chozo Ruins. Then you go back to Talon Overworld. Prime 2's map is kind of like a circle. So, wherever you are, you could go to, like, this place 
this place or this place i i know like seeing it on the webcam like it's it's weird but like i don't remember who it was i think it was king k made a retrospective and he had a nice diagram of it how it's kind of like a circular map design and the temple grounds are in the middle so wherever you are in the game you could go like for example if you're in aegon waste you could go to sanctuary fortress you could go to Ag- uh, the torvis bog or you could go back to the temple grounds and having less amount of areas really helped with that and i think that whole like metroidvania backtracking was done so much better in that game and of course it was harder it was more um hostile the environments were more hostile the bosses were cooler um the final boss which you haven't done was oh boy i that that was a struggle yeah especially because i ran out of light beam ammo which was oh god that was very frustrating yeah yeah you know it'd be cool if they didn't have ammo limitations in uh prime 2 yeah <laughs> remaster. yeah i think a remaster is gonna keep that unfortunately but oh i agree yeah. Yeah, they should they that that at that, that, that point becomes a different game like yeah i agree with you you can't do that although yeah. they did add the rapid fire to prime one it's still different yeah it's yeah. different because there's like i think there's even like power ups related to like ammo ammo expansion like you would you would be talking about yes. changing yeah like it, it would fundamentally would change, change the gameplay yeah yeah you can't do that i yeah. agree um, and it, it kind of had a reverse effect on me where i felt like i was conserving my ammo so much that i wouldn't use my dark and light ammo that that's my problem with it i yeah. want to just be able to enjoy these these really cool beams but mm-hmm. You know, they yes, you can still technically fire them when you run out. They can charge and shoot like a weaker shot, but it's it's slow and annoying. Yeah. Um, also, one an, an, another kind of negative I had was the Sky Temple keys were more annoying to get than the Chozo artifacts. That's why I haven't beaten it. Yeah, it was. I I had to, I just looked all of them up. I, I, I like, do I'm plan gonna... on being Prime Two, by the way. I, I've backed. I've ba- basically just been kind of waiting for Prime Two to come to Switch. Yeah. And so when that same day with comes, me and Prime Three, probably blitz it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So and all another thing, you know, I, I feel like Prime Two, like both are good, but Prime Two at multiplayer. So oh yeah. That, that puts it over the edge for sure. Um, oh, yeah. I would say. Yeah. All right. So can finish where do off you put trilogy? F. <laughs> really? Oh. we need more in f no no i'm joking we'll we'll put it i th- i think i was we'll gonna argue that trilogy should be like the I th- thing is i think it's an a or an s because trilogy for a lot of people they are they still say or no yeah they they still say trilogy is the best way to play the trilogy because i'll go you know i'm, I'm gonna go as far as saying this yeah and I, I i it's, it's i think a, I agree it's just a value yeah. proposition yeah it's it's three it's three amazing games for the price of one yeah and if you had got them if you got it on the wii u it was 20 dollars for three some of the best games nintendo's ever made 20 dollars. I, I just want to put this in perspective right game you came out 2000 uh 2001 metro prime launched 2002 right metro prime trilogy came out in 2009 it was seven years later so it's not like these games are old. Yeah. Right? Like think about it like this, right? Imagine if in 20 set like 2017 we got Breath of the Wild, right? We just got Tears of the Kingdom uh, this year, but there was another Zelda game in between and then Nintendo put them all three together into one collector's pack this year or next year. That would be mm-hmm. basically like the equivalent of trilogy, you know? Yeah. Um with and they they the prime one and two had control enhancements and some minor visual changes yeah. um that were supposed to be overall improvements um so it's just it's just purely a value proposition that yeah. that's that's why it's it's, it's fantastic and yeah. i remember um actually on wii u eShop, you could play all three and get you were able to download trilogy for 20 bucks yeah 20 yeah 20 bucks yeah, yeah it no, was is that, is that what you're saying earlier deal. or just that, that it was kind of dividing 60 by three i, yeah. I think i misheard you earlier but um um one interesting thing i remember i remember nintendo life did a video on the top like ranking the best wii games and i was like oh um it's either gonna be like prime 3 or xenoblade 1 at number one right prime 3 was like number four mario galaxy 2 was like number three xenoblade was number two so i was like wait what's better than xenoblade then 
then it was Metro Prime Trilogy at number one. I was like, oh, of course, Metro it's, Prime it's, Trilogy's the best. It's 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 it has, it's literally better than Prime Three because it's Prime Three plus two and one. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, and we've talked uh, about all the games individually, so yeah. But well, have you played Metroid. the original Metroid? <laughs> I've played and beaten the original Metroid. You've beaten it? Wow. Because I've seen someone play yeah. and beat it, and it looks like a very painful experience. Yeah, it was. I've only played it. You know how I played it? I played it I played on, on the Ambassador program for 3DS. I played it, uh, the demo trial on uh, uh, Brawl's Smash? Chronicle. Yeah. That's crazy. The Chronicle you, and Brawl. I take it you didn't beat it then. Oh, no, I did not. I, yeah. I played it, and then I went back to playing Star Fox 64 and I was like, I need this game. And then I got it on the virtual console. I'll say I think it's at least better than everything else on the, in the D tier. Oh, OK, so it's better than Metroid 2. To me. OK. Uh, well, also, this is coming from a guy who didn't really play Metroid 2. Yeah. So I played the beginning of it and I was like, all right, well, I played Samus Returns. I'm good. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, do you disagree? Like, I I think it fits well in there. I'm. Not I think very... it D, I think D tier is probably fair just because it hasn't aged really well. It I mean, hasn't. You want to make an well. argument that it's better than other? Uh, the thing is, honestly, mm. I think other M has really I, good gameplay. I game think play. other M, uh, Prime Hunters and Samus Returns are all better than the original, despite how iconic the original is, because I. I saw someone play it, like on Discord, they were streaming it, and I saw them play it, and it looked- They want to argue it's worse than Metroid 2? I mean, it's one of the things, because... The I thing is, this, this is the way I look at it, Metroid 1, yeah. first off, yeah. from a tech perspective, they're very comparable, right? Mm -hmm. Metroid 1 is actually better, because it was yeah. made for the home console of the time, right? Mm -hmm. um, it... From what I understand, Metroid One is a is a more comprehensive experience than Two. Mm -hmm. Is that does that feel wrong? I would say so as well. Yeah. Um. So it was weird. Is that I I haven't um. Yeah, you know, I haven't played Metroid Zero Mission, right? That's the one Metroid game that I haven't actually played at all, right? Mm. Um. But I have only. So I played all of Metroid 1, and I played all of Metroid Samus Returns, but I barely touched Metroid 2, and I barely touched Metroid Zero Mission, right? And the thing yeah. is, Zero Mission is a remake of Metroid 1, and Samus Returns is a, Met is a remake of, of Metroid 2, right? So I played the original number 1, but not the remake of number 1. I played mm -hmm. the remake of number 2, but not the original of number 2. Yeah. Um, but I've slightly played it, so... I don't know, I, I just... This feels fair to me. Yeah. It just... I would just I hold. I would hold Metroid One over Two. I think Metroid has had a very similar evolution as Zelda did. Zelda's first game was iconic, but I don't think it's really aged well. The second game was kind of like a black sheep, and it it tried to do a lot of things. Mix and it, it up. huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it it doesn't hold different. up, and it didn't really do them as well as it could have. The third game was what like skyrocketed the franchise. Super Metroid for Metroid and, and Link, Link to the Past, past for Zelda. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And I, my only real grievance with this list is maybe Federation Force. Somehow we put Federation Force at the very bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I that, I in a very holistic sense, I think Federation Force just didn't feel like the game that Metroid needed at that time. And also, like you were saying as well, like it tried, to, it tried to do something that it didn't really do properly, like with the whole multiplayer stuff. And in a few ways, it didn't really feel like a Metroid game to me. That's why I felt so confused when I saw the announcement. I was like, is this even Metroid? Is this like actually a Metroid game? Like, what are they trying to do with this? And it worked out. It was like a very lackluster kind of release, but. I, I think it was a very sour experience for the Metroid fan base at that time. Also, still one of the most disliked Nintendo videos of all time on their yeah. YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not that it doesn't have potential. It's just not what it. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. executed. There's just there's we've already talked about the issues. So yeah. All right, I guess we'll we'll leave it there. I, what do we what do we put above it? We we where do we like something's gonna be at the bottom. Yeah. Like, I know other ends, the other Metroid game that's, like, universally hated, right? But 
it actually is a good game. It just has yeah. some serious blemishes. Yeah. Overambitious at times, kind of forgot its roots at times in terms of character development. Yeah. Also just did some very strange things overall. I, I like the list though. Yeah, also. we've all we've had experience with all the games, so that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. But yeah, I think that about does it for this tier list. A very different kind of EXP podcast episode, but with a lot of the hype surrounding want, Metroid want Prime. To be, yeah, there you go. yeah, yeah, we'll do this. Yeah, Metroid Prime 4, a lot of hype going around that. And I thought I would bring another Metroid expert to discuss this with me. I think I one question I want to leave you with, and this is going to be the toughest question of them all. Where do you think... Metroid Prime 4 will end up on this tier list that we just created. <laughs> Number one, baby! Yeah, yeah I, like, I'm like... Yeah, pretty much. With the anticipation, it's gotta live up to it. <laughs> I'm, I, it to me, it's number one. Like, that, I, I believe that wholeheartedly. Now, I'll say that, you know, leading up to the release for Tears of the Kingdom, I also thought that was gonna be, like number one and the thing is from certain perspective angles like tears of the kingdom kind of is yeah right? like i mean like you maybe you like other kinds of games more but it's like breath of the wild but a heck of a lot more of it yeah and so you know if you want to look at it from that perspective it's pretty good right like so you know i think metro prime i mean yeah i i really do think the metro prime 4 is going to be that good of a game yeah. um you know i i think the thing to consider here is that with modern technology, there's more capability, right? They're, they have a higher, it's easier to make a better game with better, with newer tech, you know? Like, so that's, I think that's something to consider. Now, obviously, there are design flops that occur, but, you know, like Metroid Dread, you know, wasn't possible in the past. Yeah. You know what? What they're, yeah, what they're exactly what Sakamoto says. He was like, "We could have exactly. done this game on DS. We could have done it on Wii. Could have done it on Wii U. But we waited for Nintendo Switch to fully achieve our vision. And also, they wanted to get a developer like Mercury Steam. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And they had to train with Samus Returns. Yeah, but yeah. I, I think Metroid Prime Four will be up there. I, in terms of like, um hopes and wishes for the game i'm kind of tempering my expectations because it didn't i could see the yeah. game being the a tier like I'll, yeah. i could see people like maybe like oh it was a good game but you know it's yeah the, the reason i'm tempering my expectations isn't because i think it'll be bad but i just don't want to be expecting too much and then it doesn't reach all those sure. expectations that's kind of sure. what happened with tears of the kingdom even though tears of the kingdom was still amazing i still enjoyed my time with it very much it's one of my yeah, favorite you games of all time the story though the story was not what I wanted it to be, but yeah. it's not a I, I also I don't want to get into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also had a lot of like overinflated expectations for it. But anyways, I think I I have a lot of faith in retro. I I I I just I know that they're going to do a very good job with this game. They're very, very confident in what they're like talking about even if you like see things that they talk about on linkedin and stuff they're very confident in this mystery that is metro prime 4 so the I, small little things we have heard right is yeah yeah this is this is, this is gonna be a good game right but yeah. then what does that mean you know because i it's hard to say yeah. the thing is like what if it's like a metro prime 2 metro prime 3 quality game First off, that's really good. But yeah. The thing is, let's put this in perspective, though. That kind of quality, but made for the modern standard, might be in the S tier. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because it's those are those are games made for the GameCube and the Wii, right? Like yeah. we're talking about something made for the Switch and the Switch Two. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's just kind of different. I just hope that this game really puts Metroid on the map because the series really deserves it. Sometimes I think, like, when I saw Prime One got a remaster, I was expecting. It to put metroid on the map but it didn't really do that so i'm hoping that this game with really good gunplay with really good immerse immersive like combat and exploration i really hope a lot of like the fps fans take a look at this and be like 
hey, this is this is something, this is cool. This is a badass game that I can like play alongside yeah. something like doom or halo or i, I mean it, it may not be at that caliber but like you said we have people who have worked on those games who are working on metroid prime 4. i don't see why it, to be honest with you i don't see why it wouldn't be um yeah. well i mean from a pure shooting game perspective right like if it's more of a focus on adventure then maybe the shooting is lacking right for example breath of the kingdom they are incredible adventure games but are they the best like sword fighting action game no so there is a little bit of that yeah but i i think i think for metroid i feel like metro prime 4 they need yeah. they do definitely should like modernize the, the shooting controls and given the talent that they've hired i think that that is something that they will yeah. be able to accomplish yeah i think the game is in good hands but with yeah. that i think we'll close it out for this episode of the exp podcast thank you so much andres restart for joining it's so awesome to be collabing with you especially on my channel i i've been on some of your podcasts and discussions before and i've talked to you on various other channels but this time it's on mine and it's it's been a really awesome time doing this with yeah, you man. and yeah if somehow some of my uh subscribers and people watching this video have not subscribed to andres restart go give him a subscribe because he will be your go-to place this year for Nintendo stuff. Nintendo is going to have a very good 2024, as he is talking about, especially with X Generation console, Metro Prime 4, Mario stuff, maybe potentially some Zelda stuff as well. So go check out his stuff. He has very, very good YouTube videos. And I, I like to say that he's not the kind of guy who's very deceiving with his content. Not that anyone really is, but he's got very honest, genuine content, and I'm a real fan of his. So check him out. That. Yeah, especially like a, a lot of some of my followers and subscribers subscribe for JRPG stuff. But Andres Restart is a full on Nintendo Switch guy, and there's still a lot of JRPGs on Switch that is like the best way to play them. So yeah, give him give him some love. And yeah, thanks again for joining. And yeah, this has been Andres Restart and Niche Quick Pops again for the EXP podcast. Thank you so much for watching. Go play some great games today, like a Metroid game on the Nintendo Switch. I'll see you guys in the next one later.